Hello and welcome. This video is for anyone who's looking to get into ethical pen testing or just boost their cybersecurity knowledge. We're gonna be going through a very, very easy box on Hack the Box. Uh, so if you're a beginner, uh, this is a pretty good start. And what do I mean by beginner? Uh, I'm gonna tell you what I don't mean by beginner to start off, right? And, and what I don't mean is beginner does not mean like you've just installed Windows and are like learning computers, right? Beginner also does not mean that you've never touched like a Linux operating system. This is for like beginners who have tech literacy, have like touched a command line at some point uh, and just looking to, to maybe like get their feet wet in the, the pen testing process. So I'm gonna be using a, a site called Hack the Box for this. We're gonna be hacking a box named Lame and it's one of the much easier boxes. So keep that in mind. Um, but basically the way this is gonna work, right, is we have this box right here. It is called Lame. Um, if you want to navigate to it, maybe you're new to Hack the Box. Uh, you could go to Machines. We have active retired machines. You would go to the retired machine section here. Uh, and then you could see the lame box right there. Um, keep in mind, I cannot show active boxes. It is actually against the terms and services or the terms of service, terms of service, terms of service agreement of hack the box. Um, that's because active boxes actually give points. Retired machines do not. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with the re retired machines uh, these may require, I think this is the case for this one, this, these require a VIP subscription to hack the box. Um, so don't expect to be able to just go in and like play with any retired machines. Um, but even if you don't have a subscription, there's a lot of value to be gained from watching other people hack and watching the process here. Basically, the, the point of this series is going to be just to be what I wish I had when I was learning cybersecurity. You know, a little hacking buddy showing us what to do. First, but not least, first, but... First step <laughs> is to spawn the machine. Uh, we have the lame box right here. And when I spawn the machine, basically all that hack the box is doing is somewhere over the cloud, probably in some data center in North Virginia, it's starting a machine called lame. And when we click on it, that machine is going to have an IP address. And this is the IP address we're attacking. And keep in mind, this is the only IP address we will be attacking. It is legal and it is ethical to use Hack the Box to learn how to hack, it is not legal and it is unethical to use anything else that you don't have permission to hack into, right? So keep in mind, right? You, you wanna make sure a couple things before you get going with your attack. One is that you're connected to the Hack the Box server, right? The actual VPN or network rather. And two, that you're only attacking this IP address. Do not attack anything else. That's bad, that is very bad. We've just spawned up this machine that we're going to attack. Um, I've already signed into my VPN. Uh, if you all do not know how to do that, maybe you've never done it before, let me know in the comments. Always down to make a video on it for my YouTube channel. Um, I know I have some YouTube videos about how to like get Kali Linux, which I'm using right now and other stuff like that. Um, so always down to expand the, I guess, the archive of tutorials here. I am going to be using my own version of Kali Linux, which I currently have on a VM or a virtual machine. Um, if you do not have that, the cool thing about Hack the Box is you can actually use one of their machines, right? So if you click on Lab Access, right, I'm cur currently connected to a VPN because once again, I'm using my version of Kali Linux. Um, but if you are not using that, if you don't have a Kali Linux instance, uh, what you could do is click on Machines. I'm going to hit the back arrow because I'm currently on the VPN. Uh, and you could use their Pwn Box, right? This is their web-based in this version, in this case, it's not Kali Linux, it's Parrot Linux, but it's basically just an operating system with all the hacking tools you need, all right? Um, if Kali Linux is completely new to you, uh, check it out, right? It's pretty cool. It comes preloaded with all this crazy stuff like web application analysis stuff, um, stuff for wireless attacks, password crackers, right? Just all fun stuff for any cybersecurity person to play with. All right, so now that we got set up out of the way, I'm on the VPN, I've started the lame box. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I can actually reach the box we've started, right? So I see the IP address here is 10.10.10.3. Um, the classic way to check if you can connect and talk to any machine is to use the ping command. So I'm just going to type into my Kali terminal and to boot it up, you see this icon in the top left. So I just click that. I'm going to type in ping 10.10.10.3. A right, little rhythmic, right? A little bit of a... A little bit of a song to that one. Now, you may have no idea what we're looking at, but it is good, right? And how do I know that? 
we see we got 64 bytes from our IP address. That means the server is responding. Basically, all I've done is I've picked up the phone, I've called up 10.10.10.3, and 10.10.3 picked up the phone and said hello, right? It, it, we're basically just talking back and forth. So I know a couple things. I know I can touch the box, right? I can now go and approach that box. And the reason why that's important is if you're not able to even touch the box, how are you supposed to attack it, right? So I've just established I can communicate. Let me show you what it looks like if I cannot communicate with it. I'm going to use some bogus IP that I should not be able to hit. All right, 10.10.121. Let me clear this out so it's a little bit more obvious. All right, so I'm now pinging a fake IP address that I do, cannot connect to. Um, and as you can see, I'm not getting 64 bytes back from... I'm getting nothing from this. And it says host unreachable, right? So this is what we know in the case in which I cannot touch the box. This is that example. If this is what your screen looks like while you're attempting to do hack the box problems, there are a couple things that may have gone wrong. The most common one is your VPN is not actually connected, right? That means, and I'll show you what my VPN looks like. That means, for example, that you do not have initialization sequence complete here, right? So that's one possibility. The other possibility is maybe the box is not actually on. Maybe you thought you spawned the box, but it didn't actually spawn, right? Whatever. The last possibility, right, and probably least common, just because out of the box, Cali should not pose these issues, is maybe you have some sort of firewall preventing you from sending pings out, right? So that's another possibility there. So once again, I'm gonna ping 10.10.10.3, confirm I have connection, right? And we can tell from the website that this is the box I am attacking and no other box, right? So we have this IP address. What do we do? The very first thing I do for almost any box I pen test is I am going to use the nmap command. What the nmap command is going to do is it's going to look for vulnerable ports. What is a vulnerable port, you might ask? Well, think of it like this. Imagine you're trying to rob a house. And now, I'm not advocating for you to do so, right? I'm using this as a metaphor, so please do not do that. Imagine you were doing so, right? What you would probably do is you would check the windows or the doors. You check for any openings on the house. Nmap, right, this Nmap command we're about to do, is doing the same thing but for computers, right? Instead of knocking on a window or trying a doorknob, what we're doing is we're going to a computer... We're trying to talk to its services and see what's open, right? These ports are our way in, right? Think of like ports to a harbor, right? It's the way for your ship to land, that ship being our malicious attacks, right? So just to really highlight this, I got a little Excala draw. Yeah, I know I, I am quite the artist. And this is our IP address. I just spoiled a little bit. We're going to see these ports open, right? But this is the machine we're attacking, this big box. And all of these little segments, these are all of the potential openings that we can attack, right? So we're going to try all of these different avenues. And depending on what is vulnerable and what is not, we are going to try to break our way in through one of these ports. Now, I told you I spoiled a little bit. Um, I've actually spoiled which ports are open, so I apologize. I will not spoil anything else. I just started watching House of Dragons, so I won't spoil that either. Um, but this is in a nutshell, right? All we're about to do, right? I like to explain the command before I use it. All we're about to do is attack a box using Nmap. Um, attack's a little bit of a rough word for it. We're, we're doing, it's called active scanning, right? Active reconnaissance. So instead of ping, which is like a playful nudge, trying to see if a box will respond to us, right? Or a computer will respond to us. I'm going to use Nmap, which is a little bit more than a playful nudge, right? You should not just be Nmapping any IP address. It's actually kind of a legal gray area, like whether or not you can just end map other IP addresses. I would refrain from it unless you have explicit permission to do so. In this case, we're using an educational tool. We're using Hack the Box. So obviously we can end map this IP address. So I'm going to type in nmap. And I'm going to do 10.10.10.3 and hit enter. Ooh, or I'm going to mess up the command. I'm going to redo that. So now I've just ran the nmap command against the IP address 10.10.10.3. Now the trick to this box, literally the only tricky part of this box is 
that it does not respond to the out of the box MMAP, right? Luckily, MMAP actually gives us a recommendation. It says, uh, although the host seems down, try using the dash PN uh, option flag to ping it anyways, right? So this is going to basically ignore the fact that the host seems down and it's going to try to NMAP scan the machine anyways. Now you might ask, why don't we use dash uppercase PN all the time, right? That sounds like a, like, why would we ever not do that? Um, one of the main reasons is just for the speed of the test. You're going to see that when I MMAP it this time with the dash PN added, it's actually going to take much longer. So I'm going to do dash, uppercase P, lowercase n, 10.10.10.3, and hit enter. Now we're going to sit around. I got a snack. I got chocolate non Perels. So I'm going to eat that. And it uh, looks like it worked. Well, pretty cool. So we just now MMAP 10.10.10.3. And I know I spoiled them before, but we now see the numbers I was referring to previously. Also, I'm sorry, I know the um, <laughs> the white Chrome browser probably blinding you in contrast with the Kali Linux dark mode, so I apologize right now. But what we've just done, as I said before, is we've gone to the house, all right, picture where the burglar again. I mean, don't picture it too much, you know, just picture it in metaphorical sense. We've gone to the house, we've checked which doors or which windows may be our way in. Right, and we see these four numbers. Now, we're missing a couple things. This MMAP scan, as it is, is a little bit limited, unfortunately. It tells us the ports we're looking at. It tells us that they're all open, which is good. And it even tells us the service. Another thing we're going to want to know is the version number. The best way to think about this is when you're using Chrome and it's telling you to update stuff to like the newest version. The reason why it tells you to do that is specifically because of the fact that the older the version something is, the more likely that it has some sort of vulnerabilities on it. And we're going to see that these services, FTP, SSH, NetBIOS, Microsoft, these are actually two um, SMB uh, services. We're going to see that since they're using an old version of these services, we're going to be able to break our way in. So now how do we scan for services, right? So we've just scanned for ports. We got the number, the state, the service, right? All cool stuff. How do we now scan for the version? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do control L to clear my screen, make it clean again. I'm gonna get my nmap command back up and I'm gonna add a couple more options. I'm gonna do dash S V. I like to think of this as save version. I don't actually know what it stands for, to be honest with you. Um, dash SV, this is how we will get our version number. I'm going to hit enter. Now, this might take a little bit longer, right? Keep in mind, you might ask, why don't we use dash SV, dash SC, dash A, all of those things? Why don't we use those all the time? And once again, the reason is because it will make your scan take longer, right? And it may not be significantly longer. In this case, it's like half a minute, right? but it is longer nonetheless. If you're scanning thousands of thousands of machines, let's say you're like actually out there scanning an entire network, every extra minute matters, right? So in this case, it doesn't matter we're attacking one machine, but in a lot of cases when you're automating attacks, it's a little bit different. Okay, so we've just ran MMAP with the SV, which gets us the version number, dash PM. Let's enhance our chart a little bit here. So we see FTP, Right, we see 21 FTP, that stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's using version, I'm just gonna type in here, VS, oh, that's ugly. I'm gonna type in here, VS FTPD 2.3.4. Mm, let's make this look a little bit neater. Cool. So we now have, uh, my art is arguing with me a little bit. All right, so we now have a little bit more context on this, right? So not only is this port 21, we now know the version number. For those who do not know, right off the bat, this is a version I recognize, VSFTPD 2.3.4 is a very vulnerable version. What does that mean? It means hackers can break into your computer using this version number, not all the time, but a lot of times, right? Um... Once again, just because something is vulnerable doesn't mean it's exploitable. 
Um, but that does mean that attacker is going to be interested in it and is probably going to try at least. The other thing we see here is we see port 22. Um, it is open SSH. My rule of thumb with port 22, and this may be controversial in the cyber community or the hacking community. Um, port 22 is not the first port I start with when it comes to hacking anything, right? Um, typically, the versions tend to be relatively secure. There usually aren't a lot of easy ways to just metasploit into it. Metasploit is a tool that I will show in actually just a couple moments. Um, so for me, when I see port 22 is open, I usually skip over that. Maybe I circle back at the end, but I usually skip over that for the time being, unless I see something really catch my eye here. So right now, what's caught my eye so far, because I'm sure you're seeing a whole lot of nonsense, is VSFTPD 2.3.4. That's caught my eye. That looks pretty tasty. I'm going to probably investigate into that. And the other things that look, you know, pretty, pretty tantalizing are the Samba versions down here, or Samba versions, depending on, uh, I guess, how you choose to pronounce it. So I see Samba, SMBD, 3.x to 4.x, a little nondescript, Samba, SMBD, 3.x to 4.x. I'm going to actually go for more detailed reporting here, right? So we're going to do our third and final MMAP scan. I'm going to see if I could squeeze out any more information. I'm going to do at dash SC. Um, so this should give us, give us a little bit more information on the version number and maybe even add a column. So I'm just rerunning my previous command, right? Keep in mind, I am end mapping. I left these two options and I added a new one, dash SC. Remember, once again, for every option I add, I am looking for additional information. It will take a little bit longer. I'll also show after this basically how to see all the different options you have. There are a lot of cheat sheets on Firefox that are pretty good, right? Like if we go to MMAP option cheat sheet, uh, you'll probably see some pretty good ones. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. Cheat sheet here. We could actually see PN. We use this disable host discovery. Um, SV for version. We use that. Always for scanning the operating system. We weren't too interested in that today. Right, but always good to look at cheat sheets and know what they're doing. We just did this, SC. We're now going to scan with uh, these NSC, uh, NSE scripts. Uh, and hopefully that gives us more information. Okay. So let's compare and contrast right now, right? So this is this is my Nmap scan with just SV and PN, right? We see we have all of this information. So that is the first comparison. Now, all I've added is dash SC. So we're now running scripts on it. And as you can see, we have received a lot more information. That's good and that's bad. It's good because information is great and the answer to our problems and our way to get into this box could be in this information here. It's bad because it's more information. We got to sift through more. It took longer for us to receive this information and, you know, it could distract us a little bit. So I see information on FTPD or FTP, right? That ends here. It actually tells us, uh, you don't have to understand all of it, but it tells us anonymous login is open, which is interesting to me. We see port 22, which once again, I'm not going to start with. And this is the big thing I wanted to happen. We now see we actually have a version number for Samba 3.0.20, right? We now have that version number, which is good, right? I like that. Previously, when we didn't run the scripts, we just had this 3.x to 4.x. So that meant it could be version number 3.whatever to 4.whatever, which isn't super helpful to me. But now we have a little bit better information, right? Uh, where sh Where's she hiding? It is hiding here, right? Once again, you're probably wondering, what is all this other information? And that's fine to wonder that. If you're a beginner, this is going to be very confusing. This is part of the disadvantage of using SC, right? And using, you know, just like these version numbers to get all this information, right? So... We're going to use this information that we have so far. This looks pretty good. This should be enough to solve the box if my memory serves me correctly. So first, we're going to attack this version. All I'm going to do, I'm going to split my screen just so that we can get a side to side. All right, so on the left side, right, this is my scan. On the right side, we're going to start attacking, right? 
So I'm going to be using the information on the left to feed my attack on the right. So in order for us to attack, so far I've taught you ping, right? A little bit about ping, a little bit about MMAP. We're now going to use a complex tool called MSF console. It stands for Metasploit console. So all I'm going to do is in Kali Linux, I'm going to type in MSF console. This tool comes default with Kali, same as MMAP. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to bask in awe of the ASCII art we are about to see. So look at that, pretty cool letters. Um, all right, well, not really any ASCII art here, so that was kind of lame, but let me clear this out. Okay, so we now have MSF started. I know that because I have this little preface here, which is pretty cool. I'm going to attack this version and I'm going to show you how to do it. Right? So once again, if we go to this map here, this, what everything I'm about to do right here, right? Everything I'm about to do in the next like minute is going to be me attacking port 21 and trying to go through it to break into this box, right? To break into computer 10.10.10.3, right? So that's what we're going to be doing now. So we have all this information on the left. We have this version number. What I'm going to do is using Metasploit, I'm going to type in search, space, and I'm going to search for this version, right? Once again, keep in mind, this is our test box, right? This is our like play victim machine that we're trying to break into. And in order to figure out how to get in, I'm going to use this Metasploit console framework. So I'm hitting the search command and then the, uh, the input that I'm giving that search command is VSP, uh, VSTPD 2.3.4. And we're trying to see if there is anything. And what we actually see is we have a module uh, under exploit.unix.ftp for this specific version. Now, keep in mind, if memory serves me correctly, this before was just a, like this, this actually, this box, it's a rabbit hole, I guess you could say, a red herring maybe. Um... So even though this version is usually vulnerable, um, just because something is vulnerable does not always mean it is exploitable. And on this box, it's not. We're going to go through the motions anyways, just to show you all how it works, right? But keep in mind for, for Metasploit, step one is search for the exploitable or vulnerable version, which we see here. Step two is going to be using what we found. Um, so here, I'm going to, let's figure out a way to split this a little bit kinder. Search it again, clear. All right, let's make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so what we have here, this is the number. Uh, maybe there's a way to make this a little bit prettier. Let me clear, redo that. All right, little, little bit prettier, but still a little messed up from the split terminal. Um, but basically what we got going on here is on the right, we have Metasploit. On the left, we have our um, results from MMAP. I'll actually close this out just so that we have a little bit of a better view and bring this in clear cool so as we talked about before this is the module we found on metasploit for the vulnerable version vs ftpd 2.3.4 um, once again just because a version is vulnerable doesn't mean that it is exploitable right in this case for this practice box we're going to find out that that is the case but we're once again we're going to go through the motions just so we get the process of using Metasploit down. So step one was searching for the vulnerable version. Step two is now that we have a matching module that we can use, it's going to be configuring that. So all I'm gonna do is type in the command use zero, right? Because that is the module number we see here. I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna see a change in our terminal. Now, instead of having just this MSF6 prompt, we have MSF6 and then the exploit loaded in. And what you may have noticed, if you were uh, pretty observational, is that this path, right, this red text for our exploit is the same as the module we found before, right? So we see it is right here. So now to explain what we've done, we've searched for a vulnerable version. We've used the use command to load up this, this module here. And now we're good to go. We're, what, what's the saying? We're, the, the rubber has met the road, right? The next step, right? So once again, we did search, we did use. The next step is going to be show options. So I'm going to type in show options. And what this command is going to do is it's going to tell us all of the things we need to configure to make this exploit work. 
So we have module options. We have exploit, Unix, FTP, right? All this stuff, right? We can just ignore that. We now see three things, or really two things we need to configure. We see our host and our port. Luckily for us, our port is already configured. Um, as we talked about before with the port numbers we found, right? Sorry, gonna, blinded white, or blinding white screen about a pop-up, I apologize. Um, as we saw before, right, port 21, that is the port for our FTP uh, service, right? This is already configured, so we don't have to do that. Um, the, sec the only thing we really have to configure here is our host. Our host stands for receiving host, right? And the best way to think about it, because it's a little bit confusing, is the receiving host is going to be the victim box, right? So all we need to put for our host is the IP address that we're going to attack, right? So if you see an R in front, think of this is the victim machine that we're attacking. If you see an L in front, that's going to be our machine. That's the listening host, right? So we see an R here. So all I have to do now to configure this attack is I'm going to do set our hosts, and then I'm going to feed the IP address of our victim machine, which once again, from hack the box is 10.10.10.3. Okay, so I did set our host 10.10.10.3. I'm going to do show options again. And now we can see the change. Before this was blank, but we have now properly set this to be the IP address of the victim machine we are targeting. We've now configured everything we need. And the last step we have to do is we just have to type in exploit. Now, before I hit enter, I want to remind you, this version was strictly a diversion on this box, right? So it's not going to work, but this is the process for basically hacking into machines with this version. We're then going to move on to the actual version we're supposed to use, and we're going to use just the same exact steps here, plus like one, like half step, right? So I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it's taking some time. It's not going to work. And, uh, and then we'll move on to the version we're actually meant to attack. So it's trying, right? We hit exploit. It's basically attacking this machine with this module. It's trying its best. Uh, it's trying to break through VSFTPD. There actually is a box on Hack the Box in which this exact module and these exact steps work perfectly. Um, actually, it's the, the Metasploitable 2 machine that this works like really well, which is another box that is like free and like good for educational purposes. Uh, but in this case, the exploit did not work. So now we go back to the drawing boards, right? Let me rerun my nmap command. Give it a second, it'll pop up. Always save your nmap commands just so you don't have to do what I do and rerun it every time. I do it the lazy way. I don't save my stuff. Let me give it a second. All right, it is thinking. Once again, nmap. SV for version, SC for running scripts on it, PN for host discovery enabled, and then last but not least is the IP address that we are scanning. Uh, da, da, da. Give it a couple more seconds here. It always takes longer when you're uh, <laughs> when you're trying to demonstrate it. You know, they they say uh, the demo gods. You know, they can really determine how quickly or how slowly a scan or a command can work. Uh, I guess we pissed off the, the demo gods a little bit here. But while well, it's scanning, let's actually... Oh, no, there it is. All right, perfect. So what have we done so far? Right, just to recap. We've attacked FTP. We did our very best. And obviously, there's more we could have done. But this is the beginner-friendly version. We've attacked this version, and we have determined no. It is not exploitable. Now, obviously, we don't know that for certain, but to my best knowledge, at this point in time, it is probably best for us to move on to other versions. So, now we look at 22. As I said before, SSH, not my go-to to attack, right? These versions tend to, to not have a ton of vulnerabilities, right? The process for exploitation here tends to be a little bit more complex. We're going to skip that for now. So, that leaves us with 139 and 445. What you may have noticed is despite these being different port numbers, they're using very similar services, right? NetBIOS SSN, Samba, SMBD, cool stuff. We're going to use this version, this Samba version, and we're going to do the exact same steps in Metasploit, but instead of attacking FTP, right? This FTP version, we're going to attack this Samba version. So let's go back to Metasploit. 
Let's clear it out. Let's do search Samba. Let's do 3.0.20. Right? And you might ask, how did I know it was 3.0.20? Uh, well, I read my MMAP results and we see Samba 3.0.20. Right? So that's all I search for here. We now only have one matching module. The reason why it's good to be specific in your versions is if I did 3.0, Samba 3.0, you can see I'd have more modules to choose from. We don't want that. We want the least amount of choice. So I'm going to be as explicit as I can, which is using Samba 3.0.20. All right, so we're here. Pretty, pretty cool. Now, if you remember, the next thing we want to do is we have to do use zero to set our module, right? So once that's set, good. We now see that this has changed from Unix FTP from the X FTP exploit. It has now changed to our Samba exploit module. Now, if you remember, right, we do search, we do use, we do show options, right? So let's do show options and hit enter. Now, in this case, we have more options than last time. Last time we just had two options. This time we have four. Oh no, double the work. All we need to set here is we actually have to change two of these. We're gonna have to change the R host like last time. So let's do that. It's a low hanging fruit. I'm gonna type in set R host to, once again, R host stands for receiving host, which is our victim machine. I'm gonna set it to 10.10.10.3. How do I know that? Once again, hack the box tells me 10.10.10.3 is our victim machine. Next up, I'm going to hit enter, right? And if I do show options again, we now see that our host is properly configured. There's one other thing I have to change here, right? So if you look at L host, it is currently set to an IP address that is 192.168.80.129. This is actually not the right IP address. Your IP address is going to be different here. A lot of people make this mistake when they first start with hack the box by not changing this. This is actually the, the uh, IP address of my, my virtual machine in its private network, right? We need to change this IP address to my hack the box IP address for my virtual machine. Now you might ask, where do we get that? And there's really two places. Uh, so the first place is I could open up this, go here, and I could see that IP address right here, right? So that's place number one. Um, second place, is I could do IP space A, hit enter, right? And we'll see this IP address right here, 10.10.14.2, right? Those are our two places. Once again, this is the private IP address for my private virtual machine network, right? So can't use that. We'll have to change L host to this IP address so it matches hack the box. So let me go back, clear, show options, right? Once again, L host needs to change. L host stands for listening host, which is your attack box, which is the box I'm currently working on. I'm going to do set L host to 10.10.10 or 10.10.14.2. Now I'm going to hit exploit. And we'll give it a second and it should be voila. Uh, we see command shell session one open. Good sign. We like that. Hot. Um, and you might think, wow, this box isn't doing anything anymore. And that is correct. It's not doing anything anymore. Um, and the reason for that is because we've just broken in. Uh, you can actually tell since it says command shell session one open, we're now in, right? And how do I know that? I'm going to type in who am I? And the box just responded with root, right? So we have now successfully just hacked into another machine. So if this is your first time doing this, you know, give yourself a little clap, a little pat on the back. It's pretty cool, right? Like we've just we've just used one machine to hack into an entirely different machine by using purely technical skills and some tools, right? Pretty awesome. Now, if you want to get points for this box, right? So we have who am I root. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do cat. Uh, or let's actually, let's do ls first, right? This will list out all the directories. We got to go into the root directory right here. So I'm going to do CD ls. Yeah, root directory right here. I'm going to do CD root, hit enter, do ls again. 
and I need to read the root.txt file, I'm gonna use the cat command to read the contents. And this is the answer to our box. So to recap, we learned the ping command, we learned the nmap command, we learned some of the basics of MSF console, and we've used all of those three things to hack into our first or second or third, I don't know how experienced you guys are, to hack into a box, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, this is the flag. So just input that into hack the box, right? And once again, this is a retired machine. You won't be getting any like points from this um, or anything like that. Uh, but it is good just to keep track of your progress, right? So make sure to use that flag uh, and just track that you've completed the box and that, you know, for practice that you got it done. Um, but anyways, this is pretty much all I wanted to show today. Uh, just going through one of the boxes on Hack the Box. Let me know if you guys were interested in this, if you want me to do some other retired boxes just to show you all. Um, thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you all in the next recording.